गुड डे एवरी वन दिस इज आशीर्वाद साहू थर्ड इयर सी एस सी फ्रॉम एस आर एम इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी कटन पुला थर्ड सो आई बी टेलिंग इन ब्रीफ अबाउट माई पेपर अबाउट द इंटेलिजेंट डाटा एंड विजन इट हेज बिन रिटर्न बाई थ्री ऑफ आर मेम्बर्स विघ्नेश अलॉन्ग विथ विघ्नेश प्रभाकरण एंड अभिलाष पांडुरंगन हु आर माई क्लासमेट्स natural interaction which provides different ways to analyze multidimensional data we have seen contains of tracking sensors which are connectors that generate the time dependent output values of events navigations and actions in the scene the sensor values are then fed by the uh, into the simulation modules by simulating 3d animation functions this paper discusses and verifies the capabilities of augmented reality virtual reality and its application in the big data visualization reasons for using vr for data visualization distraction reduction vr can help us to focus on entire field of vision and help us to concentrate on the particular data to be visualized playground analytics it provides a 360 degree uh, sphere of representation which can help us to find the actual nodal values and array multi dimensional analytics we can also add hearing supplements and add audio video relations in vr which can help us to feel the data by actually hearing the loudness and the touchless control can be used to uh, find both audio and video relation bandwidth versus processing parameters human optic nerve is capable of processing up to 1 megabits per second for transferring the data but only 0.1% of this capacity is being used when we use visualization techniques in 2d by using 3d three dimensional visualization we can optimize this uh, uh, optimize this uh, uh, capacity of human optic nerve more natural interaction by real world interaction is provided using vr using this we can feel the uh, data using our human hands and we can walk around the data worlds and have a deeper analysis of data to be visualized types of data to be visualized raw data to be visualized can be of different types categorical data ordinal data interval data and ratio data categorical data these types of data are placed in some categories and they have specific character characteristics in them for example uh, data like having uh, four types of industries light industry heavy industry and so on ordinal data they have some natural ordering in them and despite being categorical they have some particular order in them interval data 
these are ordinal data but with some constant intervals they do not have any true zero value ratio data these are continuous values that have some true zero point and these ratios are meaningful in nature there are different charts that can be plotted using these types of raw data yeah so uh, as per the discussions what are we actually aiming to do in this paper the technical details have been explained uh, vividly by avilash and vignesh in due course of the video i'll be giving you a simple brief idea about what does this project stand for basically data interpretation after analysis in big data scenarios is a great deal at present we have lot of data in hand but the proper process of their analysis and their interpretation the meaningful meaningful visualization it has not been implemented properly so what can be done in that regard data interpretation started from using uh, microsoft uh, excel sheets uh, in r programming and uh, related graphs simpler graphs which are used in them mostly which were 2d in nature because of the 2d axis now in a simple screen we can go for a 2d to 3d visualization by increasing the axis this was enabled by one of the sample models which we have used in our research is a microsoft power bi in that multiple axes can be added to the existing graph to show more details about this more detailed features about the data that is available in hand this makes the person who is viewing the results understand in depth about it now let's take it a step further what if we could interact with the data what if we could enter the sphere of data and feel what is going inside see uh, what are the axes where actually the depression is occurring where is the crest and where is the trough this can happen with the use of an oculus rift or a microsoft hololens as per indian scenario we can see whichever is available we have tried with oculus rift and using a input device such as the leap motion sensor this helps us to create a 3d grid of a hemisphere in which we can interact with our hands with our head mounted uh, the hmd fpv view or the head mounted display first person view in which we can see the data by interacting with it into the sphere this is like we are walking into the data and now we have a much better view there are different angles of interpreting a data like someone sees a graph and says that uh, uh, axis, the part part b shows a model which is a bit lesser than part a someone sees that part c and d have a uh, better better average in comparison to a and b which fall in extreme parameters now if all this data is present in a 3d space in which we can actually move around and interact this makes a complete new difference we understand this is where the focus needs to be this is where the interpretation need to, needs to take place and this is the main motivity of the project so about how do we go about taking this data raw data from what we obtain from the biometrics from the sen normal uh, sensors that are present around the temperature sensor humidity sensor sensors that are embedded in robotics and uh, several other data military data remote sensing data how do we take this and make it more meaningful for visualization by those who decide to view it in a more non non conventional way this is the main idea behind the project so let's see what it has to offer talking about implementation Uh, we have been working on this project for around six to seven months. We have taken data about a uh, aluminium company, with their permission, and we're trying to visualize the different scenarios in which this data can be interpreted. And we came up with a beautiful model. I'll give you a simple concept. You apply for a leave application in a school, college, or in a company. Your higher authority takes the application, verifies it, and in case he feels that your application is genuine enough and you may be needed to give a given a leave, then he provides you a leave. now what about if we do automate this process for an organization which has more than 20 22 lakh employees as the number of people or employees in a organization increase this process becomes more and more cumbersome so to automate this process we need data visualization as well as machine learning so here we interpret the models using power bi and the 3d virtual interaction in which we figure out a model in which, uh, in in the in which the if a person applies for a leave first of all it is evaluated as per his past parameters and details which are more than 30 to 40 columns starting from his uh, number of leaves he has taken his you know, the priority of the work that he is assigned to the number of leaves that has been taken by him what are the specificity of the family backgrounds and several other evaluation parameters which has been discussed in detail and a copy of the same data analyze analyze can be obtained uh, from the first author uh, by requesting him on email 
uh, you click on a single parameter like the age group from 21 to 25 and it gives you a complete scenario over all the data sheets or pages about what is happening over the whole, whole model and this process is almost 85 percent 80 to 85 percent accurate exactly around 84 what we have obtained this shows that uh, a simple process like a lib application can become automated as well we cannot always prove this to be 100 percent true that the lib application has been granted genuinely or a person genuinely requires a leave but hasn't been granted but yes this solves the problem up to a great extent now what if we take this to the stock market scenario take it to the military analytics scenario and a lot more it has immense opportunities to offer uh, let's hear from Vignesh what he has to say after a few slides <laughs> Let's uh, begin with the uh, pro provision of input to the virtualization uh, procedures. So first what we will be doing is we will be creating, importing the VRML CAD models. After importing the VRML CAD models, we will be using uh, the virtual world file. Uh, we will be creating a virtual world file, but the creation of this virtual world file has some certain complications. It would not be a clean format. So hence the next step would be cleaning this particular format of the virtual world file. So after this, we would be requiring uh, to import the model into the virtual world file. Once we import the model into the virtual world file, uh, we are almost done and we are ready to go with the provision of the input to the virtualization. But uh, still there are some procedures as, as in like suppose we want to make use of some block diagrams and other such uh, procedures for visualization. In that case, you know, we also need to import some frameworks, uh, framework models into this uh, uh, virtual world file. After we import the models into a virtual world file, what we'll be doing next is uh, we'll be uh, creating uh, sync block references, the single sync block references. After creating the sync block references, we should be essentially creating uh, binding signals for each sync block reference. After the binding signal uh, is created, we can conclude that uh, the input for the uh, VR virtualization is uh, visualization is ready to be has been completed. So uh, moving forward to the next thing, which would be the reasons for the data visualization, like why we, we already have visualization techniques. What exactly is the purpose of going into a, uh, data visualization using VR? So the first reason as, as mentioned is uh, reduction or distraction. If we are in an environment where data is prevalent around us and we are in the middle of data, in that case, we would be more likely to interact with data, it will create a more immersive nature of data. So. We can say that we are able, it will help us to understand the data in, in much more description and detail. So after this, we can talk about for playground analytics. So what playground analytics does is like uh, generally in 2D, we have something like uh, we just have like a screen or something of that sort. But uh, when we go to VR, we talk we speak about skyboxes. So when we talk about skyboxes, essentially a, a 360 environment wherein we are able to uh, interact with data. Like, throughout around us as we told earlier like completely immersive nature for data so it is very important uh, to have a playground of analytics so that we could uh, interact with data in a 360 environment where we can uh, move around the data and uh, have it in a say around a real time experience so then we go on to like uh, NRA multi multi-dimensional analytics so why NRA multi-dimensional analytics at times we have situations wherein uh, we cannot analyze a model in 2D. At that time, we have to move to 3D or multi-dimensional. For example, we have models such as support vector machines, which can be even as long, as small as two dimensions or even as big as 32 dimensions. So in that case, when we want to analyze the uh, hyperplanes associated with that, we need a variety of dimension, a vast amount of them. So in that case, we require an NRA multi-dimensional analytics possibility, which can be provided to us only if we are moving into, only if we are expanding the dimensions in which we are uh, providing analytics so also we can uh, get haptic feedback gloves wherein we can uh, interact with this thing in multi-dimension so we are able to uh, analyze the essence of it and uh, also able to uh, visualize it in a better fashion then uh, going about bandwidth versus processing parameter which is the uh, this is one of the again crucial things for data visualization uh, normally an optic nerve it has around uh, it transfers data at the speed of around 1 mb per second but when you are about just going through a normal perusal of data, we just use around 0.1% uh, of the total capability. So in that case, uh, when we want to uh, like create a more immersive view uh, from a 2D to a moving to a 3D uh, uh, 
playground. In that case, a three day data simulation is better carried using uh, virtual reality. And then uh, also about uh, the natural interaction. Also, I don't think it's only sufficient if we are able to view the data in this thing. We or in in uh, greater dimensions. It is also equally important to visualize the data in uh, greater dimensions and also able to modify the data and perform analysis analytics over it. So in that case, we should be able to interact with the data. So for interacting with the data, there are several possible ways. Uh, one could be the leap motion sensor, which allows us to interact data with by just using our fingers, and then uh, it can also be using uh, feedback haptic feedback loops. So then uh, moving on to the challenges which we face on the temporary barriers uh, during the visualization of this in 3D. So main interest to virtual reality can there are a lot of interests to virtual reality, but um, Nowadays, a lot of these things have been minimizing extensively due to the uh, technology that has been uh, used right now. For, for instance, we can say about the resolution of the headsets actually. It, uh, the, we require a pretty good uh, headset, with a headset with a very good resolution, so we are able to distinctively uh, draw comparisons and uh, distinctions between uh, text perusal and uh, image identification or just like about more distinctive classification. So then, so for that we move on to more uh, technically sound gloves as in we use the HTC Vive or the Oculus Rift for the, for, for in case of VR. And then uh, we have uh, also as I mentioned earlier, like we have to use uh, uh, analytics over the VR environment so that we are able to perform the uh, data analytics for, for the VR environment. So it's not just enough to uh, just uh, view the data and just being able to uh, look upon and draw uh, the essential uh, intelligence sort of the, the data which we could derive and then uh, finally which should uh, which is one important challenge which we have over here is uh, the realization of data visualization as in uh, we have we get a particular data multi-dimension how can we essentially what exactly can we understand from the particular data as in uh, when we talk about multiple dimensions there are possibility of multiple uh, uh, outcomes coming out of the data, some of which may be expected, some of which may not be expected. So in that cases, we will need to know what realization which are able to be able to achieve from this particular data. So then we are moving on to uh, this device, which is called a leap motion sensor. A uh, leap motion sensor is a device which is used for uh, interaction uh, in VR. What we do here is like uh, it's essentially a device which has something called as an interaction playground. So in an interaction playground, what happens is uh, we have uh, a particular region wherein uh, there is a particular set of light rays or IR rays which are being transferred from the uh, leap motion sensor screen or uh, over the interaction window workspace. So when we take our hands over it, uh, over the particular uh, interaction window workspace, what happens is this this creates a place where there is a blockage of the passing of light. As in uh, the joints of our hands, like the carpals and metacarpals, what happens is they have like uh, they are they are actually opaque in nature. So in that case, uh, the light the, the light rays which are transmitted by the particular uh, leap motion sensor aren't uh, it, they don't allow it to pass through it. So in that case, we are able to get particular points. It's like a forming of a shadow, but more like it's getting formed in the uh, three dimensions. So uh, this particular uh, obstruction would be the reason for which our hands would be there, which can we used to track the motion and uh, when we uh, add something called as uh, the object weight to the particular data points on the particular uh, uh, skybox environment generated by our leap motion sensor can be used to interact with those particular points, can be used to manipulate those particular points and can also be used to uh, modify the points as per uh, our demands or needs. Okay, so that was the brief representation of what the research has to say. Uh, to know more details, you can contact the authors and go through the complete paper. It has been attached as in PDF in the compressed file. You can also go to the, go through our presentation. And uh, thanks for giving us this opportunity to present it in this international forum. Thank you.